Hello, my name is Maria Yanovitska. I am general pathologist in Department of Pathological Anatomy Number no. One in National Medical University of Bohomolets. I would like to introduce to you short data about practical skills in general uh, pathology. Uh, and I will describe you some macro and uh, microscopic pictures about general pathology of lung. First of all, we start from normal histology, because it's impossible to understand pathological processes without knowledge of normal histology. So that's how healthy lung looks like. We see here alveoli and lumen of bronchioli. And here we see mostly normal lung, but with presence of carbon particles. This is not a pathological condition necessarily. It happens often due to urban living. So if you like big cities, you will surely have the same in your lungs. And this one picture is surely pathological condition. This is brown in duration of lungs. It happens due to chronic venous congestion in small circle of blood circulation. Macroscopically, lung would be more dense and brownish and microscopically, we see alveoli that are more sclerotic and fibrotic with accumulation of hemosiderin from breakdown of red blood cells that stay for too long due to congestion. And here is the same picture, the same process, but uh, it is a special stain, so-called pearl stain, that colors iron in blue color. Iron is present here due to hemosiderin accumulation. And one clinical case. A 67-year-old man sought medical care at the hospital due to severe chest pain lasting for 24 hours. Pain radiated to his left hand. At emergency department, he complained about shortness of breath. But despite the first aid treatment, the patient died. How do you think? What is the diagnosis and what will autopsy most likely show? So the right answer is acute left side heart failure uh, due to myocardial infarction and lung edema due to acute passive venous congestion in lungs. And that is how it looks under the microscope. So when the heart abruptly stops pumping blood and it leads to acute venous congestion in lungs or lung edema. The alveoli here are filled with a smooth or slightly flocular pink uh, material consisting of plasma mixed with air, which is normal to be in lung. And this is lung infarction. This is type of necrosis due to some vessel block. In lungs, it is always red, infarction due to special features of hemodynamics in lung. And microscopic, microscopically we also see this red area of infarction. And here is alveoli shown with particles of fat. Here they are. Again, it's a special stain which colors fat in red because classical stain with hematoxylin eosin makes fat colorless. That's why prior to establish diagnosis of fat embolism, we should suspect it and know which stain to establish. And here is lobar pneumonia. All alveoli are filled with dense exudate in which we see a lot of neutrophils, and a lot of fibrin, which looks like thin threads, like this. That's why we admit this type of inflammation to fibrinose. And here is lung abscess, or um, cavity of prior abscess. Abscess is type of purulent inflammation, and it always has a capsule filled with pus. Obviously, we don't see the pus here, but the cavity is present. And one more clinical case. 
Patient, a 38-year-old male, was admitted to the hospital after three weeks of cough, profuse nocturnal sweating and loss of appetite. Chest X-ray showed bilateral nodules with a miliary pattern. How do you think? What is the diagnosis here? So one of the first things you should think about in that case, of course, is tuberculosis. Tuberculosis, uh, and this is how it looks under the microscope. So we see tuberculous granulomas with rounded outlines and discrete borders. And inside such tu uh, tuberculous granuloma, we always see area of caseous necrosis surrounded by uh, transformed macrophages. These are epithelioid cells with lymphocytes and plasma cells. Some of these macrophages can group together and form pyrogov hans giant cells. Here they are. And here you can look on them more detailly. So these are the special pyrogov hans giant cells and they are multinucleated cells and nucleus are situated on the periphery of the cell like a horseshoe. Thank you for your attention.